Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Well, it's been another interesting week of not going to the theater, at least the live version, which after all used to be the only kind we ever experienced. Some productions here have already been fatally infected, so to speak. These include The Hangmen on Broadway and Endlings, The Perplexed and Unknown Soldier off Broadway. None of those will return. Finances, actors' commitments, and prior season scheduling are making it tough for many shows to wait out some eight weeks or so. But I am proud of that community, perhaps hardest hit here in New York, but really all over the country for finding ways to get their products to their patrons. And who knows, this might even be a time to create new theater goers, to introduce them to the joys of watching stories come alive on a stage, even while doing it via one of their many screens. That thought also worries some, but more on that in a moment. Let's start with just a few immediate suggestions on how you can enjoy theater now. First of all, there's broadwayhd.com. This site offers uh, the largest number of theatrical events. Stream your favorite Broadway hits as its welcoming logo. And you can try it out with a week-long free trial. LA Theater Works, founded in Los Angeles in 1984, this media powerhouse includes a long list of recorded plays, many of which travel nationally that are available for streaming. These include a mix of original works and great classics. I highly recommend the importance of being earnest. Many schools have already signed up, which is hopeful. Individual theater companies, of course. Now check out what your favorite nonprofits are offering. Rattlestick Playwrights, for example, is streaming its latest production, Siblings Play. Primary Stages has a whole plan in place, including master classes with well-known theatrical names. Ensemble Studio Theater is offering playwrights talks. And since we are all feeling pretty solitary, we can go to Instagram to find viral monologues sponsored by another theatrical entity in the city. Symphony Space now has an active online presence. You can watch some of that beloved institution's past events and maybe even contribute a few of your own works. And it's time to think outside the box and the city. Berkeley Rep, a highly respected company, is streaming some of its shows, especially to customers who have bought tickets to see them. Likewise, the McCarter in Princeton has a huge trove of archives soon to be brought back to virtual life. Basically, it is an opportunity to go to any of these that you have heard of, and you will find information and entertainment. If you're ready to brush up on your Shakespeare, several companies have found ways to invite you to listen and even participate. An entity called Creative Women New York is sponsoring the Shakespeare 2020 project in which every one of the Bard's plays is being performed or read aloud. Now, they've mostly, they've mostly been doing it at places like the 92nd Street Y, but with the virus, these are now being done online. I listened to Two Gentlemen of, Two Gentlemen of Verona this past weekend. What's unique about the project is that audience members, or in this case, listeners, are assigned roles to read along with the prose. So we are looking at the script together. Your lordship sent her thither may not be something we'll be saying on a regular basis, but it's fun to try. The truth is Shakespearean language is difficult for many of us to process. Somehow looking at the words while they are being spoken turns out to be a valuable lesson of sorts. And then there are industry sites, websites, other ones like Broadway World and Theater Mania, which offer up-to-date news and streaming suggestions. Broadway licensing has hundreds of shows available, primarily geared to younger viewers. PBS, yes, the supposedly old-fashioned network, is more Broadway attuned than ever before. Great Performances is filled with what feels like live entertainment. You'll be surprised how many productions are there awaiting your click, including Hamilton's America, one of my favorites. Needless to say, all these companies that I mentioned now who are rising to the crisis will also be in deeper need of financial assistance. Being able to stay afloat after months of non-activity will be the challenge of their lives. We have rent to pay, employees to pay, utilities to pay, taxes to pay, and no regular income to speak of, Armin Shimmerman of Los Angeles' highly respected Antaeus Theater told me. Our sole source of income is now from our donors who are suffering from major losses in the stock market. 
Long term, I expect many small theaters will be forced to close. Well, that is surely the most dire of possibilities, but Shimmerman is not alone in his fear of the future. Gary Grossman, who runs the Skylight Theater in Los Angeles, asks, will people seek out live group experiences when this is over, or will they continue to isolate themselves virtually? Huh. By and large, the theater community is resilient and nothing if not creative, but the challenges are enormous. Risa Brainin runs the theater department at UCSB. She told me, I'm trying to figure out how I can teach directing when actors can't be in a room together, and directors and actors can't be in a room together. The theater teaching community has come together, offering each other lots and lots of ideas. There is no shortage of innovation, she says. And if you grow tired of streaming theater, watch a movie about or based on theatrical works. All About Eve, A Chorus Line, Birdman, Chicago, My Fair Lady. There are obviously countless choices. Since you're not going to see the reimagined controversial West Side Story on Broadway anytime soon, well, watch the Oscar-winning movie and cheer Jerome Robbins' unforgettable and inimitable choreography. Of course, this golden age of television is also a lifesaver now. I asked a group of friends to suggest their favorite binges. Lots of votes for Babylon Berlin, which, like other shows and current books that take place during worldwide crises, suddenly feel oddly relevant. Now, I'm currently reading The Big Goodbye about the making of the movie Chinatown. During the part when it focuses on the Manson murders, Sharon Tate, of course, was married to Chinatown director Roman Polanski, one is reminded of the pall that fell over Los Angeles, where I lived at the time. Polanski discerned the change in Los Angeles, reads one line from the book, from bucolic suburbs with quiet streets and houses left virtually opened to an area of very dangerous living with people barricading themselves inside. Meanwhile, we try to get through these barricade, barricading days. I used to lament how quickly years were passing. Now I marvel at how slowly days can pass. I veer back and forth between which is eerier, the sounds of silence on these city streets or the sounds of sirens. And so many decisions that once would have seemed trivial. What flavor of Ben and Jerry should I have tonight? Should I finally wash my hair? Should I actually learn how to Zoom? Is it time to try oat milk? Or go online and buy from the rare tea company, one woman's truly organic and delicious creation, which, like so many other small businesses, needs support now simply to survive. Personal paralysis may ultimately help us remember that seemingly smaller things may be even more savored when we are not rushing our way through them. Finally, we all need ways to laugh and try to find places to do so, which brings me back to the theater. If you are not familiar with the name Randy Rainbow Jill, that name and YouTube are your next destination. So guess what? you Did, did you mention all those great theater? I know you mentioned all the th great theater things to watch. And, yeah. And I, presumably you saw Kelly O'Hara singing from her, you know, home, which was fabulous. Yeah, they're doing a lot of that. I think Roseanne, uh, no, not, was it, was it Roseanne? Rosie O'Donnell, I believe, last night on Broadway HD or Broadway.com, one of the two. I think she kind of moderated or held almost like a town hall of performances. Yes, a lot of people like Kelly O'Hara, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber has offered, you know, his movie. He's sitting there at a piano. You can watch him play So there's all sorts of fun stuff that you otherwise wouldn't see. And That's right. Last but not least, I, one of the things I didn't, you may, perhaps you mentioned it, but, you know, when you mentioned uh, street, All About Eve, et cetera. But yeah. there are some really terrific theater books, too, that people should, you know, just just dig into, starting with uh, William Goldman's book, Broadway, going back year. You know, there's just all sorts Absolutely. of well, stuff. Well, the great one, yeah, Act Moss Hearts, Act One. Right, and... Greatest. And then Jack Rattel, the book that he wrote a couple of years yep. ago, is really um, entertaining. You know, if you like any inside baseball, quote, quote, you know, these are things that you. Absolutely. So I've I talked just, a number of times here about the recent biography of Elaine Stritch. I didn't think I would be enjoy that so much. I totally did. And my God, how many times here have I talked about Mike Nichols and the recent book about him and how he put his shows together? I mean, 
they're like primers, you know, if you're ever... Exactly. It is just time to learn. That's what I was saying about the Shakespeare thing. Right. And Maybe. so I'm just throwing that out there as well because yeah. it is a time to learn and to... Uh, somebody once said, of, I, I had a wandering dog once and he went to the library and this, this great guy said, ah, you must have gone to bone up on... You must have gone to bone up on something. And I just every time I say what I'm about to say, this is a wonderful time to bone up on your field. It is. And, the, you know, again, from all the sorts of different when I say all sorts of different sources, uh, we, we got books, boys and girls. And Listen, I never thought I'd live long enough to see all these TV shows. And who knew that uh, that I would. And, uh, you know, the, again, the, the hope is that. We'll get a lot out of it. We'll learn a lot. We'll appreciate things. But then when it's over, which it will be, we will go back to being with other people and enjoying all sitting together. In the Watching theater. a show. Watch Absolutely. Our... Yep. That's, that's the hope. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.